מועדים עוד שמחה. שורט סמי דבר הלוך תנאי. The uh, father of Ashkenazic Psa Kaloche from the uh, end of the 13th century is uh, Rabbi Soil Iserlin, who uh, was a Rav in Austria and uh, who wrote a famous sefer called uh, Trumata Desha. Uh, Deshen, the Gematria in Deshen is 354, Dalit Shin Nun, 354, which are the numbers, which are the number of days in the Jewish calendar. A Jewish year is 354, if it's not a leap year, sometimes it's adjusted with uh, Kislev and Cheshvan, but the standard uh, year is 354. And he said that if you study, there are 354 questions and answers that he posed in this Sefer. If you study one a day, so within a year, you'll be a big London. The uh, problem with the Sefer, the Shach points it out, is that he not only invented the answers, he invented the questions. They were not questions that were asked of him. They were theoretical. And uh, the Shach and other poskim point out <clears throat> that there is no, so to speak, siyata de shmaya, there's no help from heaven on theoretical issues. If a person comes to a Rav with a practical question, that's a real question, so then there's a hope that uh, heaven will help determine the correct answer. But if it's only an exercise in scholarship, so to speak, so there's no siyata rishmaya, so the shach says, we don't know if we can rely exclusively on the Truma Tadesh, even though, as I mentioned before, it really is the basic book of Ashkenazic Psak. His descendant, Rabbi Moshe Yisrlin, was the Ramah that uh, appears in the Shulchan Aruch as the Ashkenazic Posek. However, <clears throat> there's a second section to the book second volume to the book, which is not uh, as well known. And there the questions are real. And he has a very interesting question that's Nogea Sukkot. Now in the uh, 12th, 13th, 14th century, they get an esrog in Austria uh, was not a simple matter. We live in a time when unbelievable events have occurred. One of the signs in my uh, eyes of the revival of the Jewish people is the fact that there are a million and a half as Rogan. And it's a, it's a billion dollar industry. When I grew up yet in Chicago, my father's shul, there were 750 mispalalim and there were three Yisrogim in shul. 
And there was an hour before Hallel where they passed the word, the Astrogim around, everybody to make a bracha. So he has an interesting shyly. A man had an esrog, it was a big esrog. So he sliced off slices to give to his neighbors. <clears throat> his, uh, he kept more than 50% of the esrog for himself. So therefore, is he able to uh, be outside the mitzvah of Esrik? I'm not talking about brachas here. I'm talking about the mitzvah. So uh, the Chumash uh, Adeshin decided that the uh, he was able to be yotze even though he had an esrig that pieces were sliced off of it. So then the second part of the question is, what about the people that got the pieces? Do they have any connection to the mitzvah at all? Because they don't have the shear. They don't have a myth. They don't have 50% of an esrig. They have a slice of an esrig. What about them? Right, so this is a window into, uh, into the Jewish world, right? right? But people think that our world is always the way it is. So interestingly enough, he says, you're not Yotze to Mitzvah, but it is something. If you have a slice of the esrig together with the luluv and the arovas and the hadasim, and you hold them together, it's something. What is something? So he says there's a concept called shiure mitzvah. Shiure, that's shin yud vav reish yud like Shirayim, right? What's left over. So it's left over from the mitzvah. So the question is, does Shiure mitzvah have a Gdusha to it? Even though it's not sufficient for the mitzvah itself. What is its status? So there's a well-known uh, uh, in the yeshiva world, it's really based on the Gemara and the Dorin. There are mitzvahs that there are a cheftza, meaning an object which is the mitzvah, like matzah on Pesach is a cheftza of mitzvah, and then there's something that's called a gavra. The object itself is not necessarily invested with holiness. The person that uses the object for a mitzvah, so he is the gavra that activates the mitzvah. So what is an esrog? Or what are any of the arbamini? Are they a chefts of mitzvah? like matzah, or no, there's an obligation on every Jew, lakachtem lochem by to get to take these four species and to hold them and uh, to, that's the mitzvah. But the objects themselves are so to speak neutral. So the Juma Sadashin introduces this concept of shiure mitzvah because he holds 
that the esrog itself is a chefza of mitzvah. It itself is a mitzvah. It has its own, so to speak, internal holiness. Therefore, if you slice off slices, so even though I cannot be mekayim, I cannot fulfill the mitzvah because the, I only have a slice of it, but the slice of it is also a piece of mitzvah. And therefore, he says that on sukkahs, people could use it. The bracha is a different matter completely, which I will not enter into. So the post can discuss this, Shaila. Even though thus it sounds outlandish. There was a movie that was made uh, called the Uspizin here, famous movie, in which a secular Jew comes to celebrate Sukkot with a Haredi family. And the secular Jew knows nothing, so he slices the asterisk to put a piece into his tea. But that's a real question. So they compare it to tzitzis. A person has a talis, talit koton or talit godo, and has four tzitziot. And all of the tzitziot were kosher. And then something happens, as often does. And one of the tzitzes unravels a little. Or one of the strings gets torn off. So now instead of eight strings, you have seven strings. Or you have six strings or whatever you have. Or you don't have five knots anymore. The Rambam Shita, you don't have 13 knots, whatever. So <clears throat> the halacha there is that if the person is in the middle of davening and it's noticed, he can keep on davening and he can keep the talitan because that's sure a mitzvah. The tzitzis were made l'shem mitzvah. So therefore they are a heft of mitzvah and if you have a piece of mitzvah left over, so you have a piece of mitzvah left over. So there's a dinishiure mitzvah. So the same rule, question of about Pesach. You don't have a kazayas. So in our time, how to define a kazayas is also an issue that uh, I'm not gonna go enter into. But it's obvious you don't have a kazayas. You have a few crumbs. So again, they're shiurei mitzvah. So you should use them. So this concept of shiurei mitzvah is a uh, an item that uh, comes to define uh, the holiness of, a, of, a, of an object. And it seems to be that if the object was created L'shem Mitzvah, then every atom of that object retains the Gdusha of L'shem Mitzvah. The question of having a shear the question of meeting the halachic requirements, that's a different matter. So uh, that Shiloh, for instance, uh, happened in the Second World War, I remember, in Chicago, there were no Estrogen. Couldn't get an Estrogen. You know, it's hard to believe, but uh, I'm, I'm telling you the facts. And the question was to use the Estrogen from last year. People have an asterisk and they put it away and it dries up. 
can you use that esrim? So you can't use it to be eight in the mitzvah of the Arisa, because in the Gemara it says that we don't hold an esrim from year to year. But in the concept of shiurei mitzvah, it's present. It was created for the mitzvah, a mitzvah was performed on it. And therefore, if you have no choice, you should do something with it. So even if you're not Yotse to Mitzvah Minatora, but something should be done with it. Because the nature of Kedusha is that it's in every atom and every molecule of the thing. So that's an interesting idea about Sukkot. What about if you're in a sukkah that's not 100% either? Should you go out there or just stay in the house? So again, you have the concept of shure mitzvah. What's the mitzvah that the sukkah is, a, or that only you're obligated to eat in the sukkah or sleep in the sukkah? So this reverberates throughout halacha, and we see it in many, many cases and in many instances. And there's uh, something to be said that we should have in mind that something that was once Kadosh does not lose the Gdusha. And therefore, that concept of Shuri Mitzvah applies even in such a case. Rabbi Hanani ben Akashu, Merotza Kadosh Borchu, Lazakas. As Israel, if you have here below him, Toro and its souls, she never had a number of